Welcome everyone, this is the first video of the new kind of setup on the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Robo Taxis, will be a fact of life very soon. This is going to be Ross Gerber and Alex Kontrowitz, or somehow however you say his name. They're going to be talking about it and giving their opinions, and I'm going to give my opinions in the process. So make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and let's get on into it. Joining me now, widely followed Tesla investor Ross Gerber and CEO and president of Gerber Kawasaki and big technology founder and CNBC contributor Alex Kantrowitz. He got the cruise L.A. scoop. It's good to see both of you today. All right. So first of all, I have to Ross Gerber. He's really good. He follows Tesla very well, uh, widely. Uh, I see him all the time on CNBC. I respect his opinion. I think he does uh, a lot of research on him, and I'm excited to see what he has to say about it. To ask when you have robo taxis going to L.A., Alex, I would think like th the rest of the cities are just going to fall in line. That seems like the big one to me. Absolutely. So the thing is with these cars, the toughest thing was to get them operational in one or two cities. We know that both companies have them operational in San Francisco. There's been movement in Austin, movement in Phoenix. Now the real question goes from being a technology. Did he just say both companies have them operational in San Francisco or we already have these out? They definitely don't have them where I'm from. OK, they're definitely in my part of the United States. We're not there yet. But in L.A., you know, California, maybe Florida. Some of the higher population states where a lot of people stay probably get them first. But I had no idea we were already there. I thought this was all beta. LG issue to being a supply issue. How quickly can they make these cars? We have both in L.A. now. I think that we're going to end up seeing this stuff expand faster than the general public is willing, is, is able to comprehend. And, you know, I was speaking with... That car had no driver in there. There's no... They're, they're just going to take the front seat out of the car eventually. And they'll just turn that front seat backwards so all four seats will be facing each other. I can already see the vision. The CEO of Cruise, tens of vehicles on the road last year, hundreds this year. They expect thousands next year, and they're going to 10x every year after that. This is going to be a fact of life in the U.S. very, very soon. Uh, you know, I saw... That's a big, bold statement. 10x every year. Uh, something that looked an awful lot like that in Las Vegas recently. I've been to Arizona, and I've seen these cars that have been around in, in the greater Phoenix area. Ross, I mentioned the companies that are testing and, and where their testing cities are right now. But Tesla seems like the big one and the, and the one that has really been pushing this envelope. What does this mean that these other competitors are coming in and landing the cities that say, yes, you can test them here? Well, you know, what was just said by Alex is true. If the cities like Austin and Phoenix, which are actually easy cities to actually drive, are going to be mastered a lot quicker than people expect. And, and these companies can expand in these, like, secondary cities, I think, very rapidly compared to L.A. But I think it's really noteworthy to see crews coming into the jungle of L.A. roads where I've been training you know, Tesla full self-driving for probably over a year now in the real jungles of driving L.A. And so, you know, until you can drive L.A. traffic, 405, 101 in traffic, you know, you haven't really done anything. He, he makes a good point. The traffic and the stop and go is what the, um, auto driving has the hardest time with and factoring in stuff like that. Um, but they're doing a great job. Tesla's way ahead. And... The fact that they can make your car drive itself already, just think they'll be able to, I mean, it's just one update away from not needing you to control it or even be in the car. It's already driving itself mainly. So, so I think there's this dual challenge between the technology being mass adopted, but also being able to master bigger cities and also continue to do it safely in scale, which is, I think, going to be more challenging than, than people think. By the way, we polled our audience on Twitter X. We're going to start saying X all the time, but and we, I go, we have to go a bit further so that I make sure that everybody is with me and knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, Twitter's now changed at, uh, named X. Would you would you get into a self driving cab? 40 percent of people say yes. That's actually a big percentage of people. We're not even there yet. Tesla's barely drive themselves, um, and and the fact that people would get into a car with no driver. Um, already, that, that, says, that says a lot. Sixty percent of the people who responded said they would not get into a self-driving car. Is that a problem for these companies? What do you think, Alex? Well, yeah, I, I don't think so. And I'll, I'll admit, I was skeptical until I got into one for the first time last week. And I was nervous as we started moving through San Francisco. 
But by the second ride, I started to feel like this was a little bit normal. And the third ride, I wasn't even paying attention to the fact that the steering wheel was moving on its own. And there was absolutely nobody in the car except for me. And I wasn't driving. So I think this is going to be something people are going to have a little bit of hesitance to. It will break along generational lines. Also, younger people will be much more willing to get in than folks who, are, who haven't seen this technology you know, since they were born. And, and, but I do think that once people start to try it, and they will try it, that 60% number is going, to, is going to decline dramatically because my picture of this, technolo of this technology from where I was last week to where I am this week is completely different. I don't ever want to drive with the human driver again. I want to just be in these Waymo cruise vehicles. And if we can do that, and when we can do that, it's going to be much better for the rest of this entire country. That makes such a good point. Once we get this full self-driving, guys, they are going to be better than humans. Think about how bad humans are. Think about how little the certifications are to actually pass the driving test and how far ago you had to do it. I mean, you could pass the driving test when you were 16, like, you know, go to Mars or go into a coma for 48 years and wake up. You still have your driver's license. I'm pretty sure you just get into a car and you just drive. Hopefully you know how to drive. Okay, you're on the road with those people and everybody in between. Self-driving, they, they accommodate, they account for all of that. Even even nutty stuff that will jump out in front of you, it's ready. I, I, he's making great points, guys. Interestingly, my executive producer told me before the hour began, not just not now, but never. He would never get in one, and I tried to make him put money <laughs> on it, and, and he wouldn't do it. And it's on video, too, so I have proof. But, R Ross... The other thing is, as these cars go out in these various cities, there's got to be a real cost associated with them, right? Because like, just for vandalism alone, I mean, we have the video that shows people messing around with these cars. So how do you get past that cost hurdle for the, the self-driving taxis? Well, I think, you know, first of all, 40% of people saying they're going to get in a robo taxi is actually an amazingly good number, oh. you know, just to know, you know, you, could, you would think it'd be 95% of people would be scared, you know, but actually a, a pretty decent amount of people are willing to do this right now. So I think that says something about where the technology already is and where it's going. But, you know, secondly, you know, somebody vandalizes a, a Tesla, for example, it's on video and the whole thing's recorded and I can actually look at my Tesla live like a ring camera in real time. So, you know, being a vandal. That's a great point. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Guys, I'm, I'm a bigger and bigger fan of Tesla every day. It's hard not to be if you listen to Ross. Um, it's, I mean, they're going to take over the world. If you listen to him, you believe the, you believe in Elon, which he's not giving you a reason not to. Vandalism is kind of going to be a thing of the past, I think. So, it, you know, it's easy to track people down. But that said, I think there's this cross between humans and technology that's always had this conflict as new technologies are adopted. And just like when seatbelts were mandatory, people were like, oh, I'm not wearing a seatbelt. And there was a lot of pushback. You know, soon, you know, yeah. we'll be pretty used to this kind of driving. I hope you enjoyed the video. My final kind of thoughts on self-driving. I do think it will be a fact of life. I think it's going to be um, very soon. I think it's going to be safer than most people driving. I think that we're going to benefit all from it. We'll be able to call a, instead of a taxi or an Uber, you'll be able to just press a button and it'll all be in the systems where a self-driving car will come up to you, let you get in, take you wherever you are. You never have to see anybody, talk to anybody. You don't even have to own your own car. You'll be alone the whole time. You can have a group of people um, and they'll, they'll find a way to get the cost effectiveness down to where it's reasonable or in line with a cab maybe just slightly above for the first couple years, but guys, this is the future. Anyways, make sure and hit the like button, subscribe, start a new videos just like this, and I'd love to have you. Catch you next time. Peace.